Hi, my name is Céline Boutier and I just won the LPGA Drive On Championship. And I would say of all of the players that we see at Trinity Forest, which is a lot of professional players, a lot of people that have dedicated their lives to playing really good golf, I think I see you more than anyone else. I, th I think you work harder, and that's a really high bar because everyone's working really hard. I think you work especially hard. And so a question that I wanted to ask you was, what does hard work look like? Other people think that they're working really hard. Can you give us, give the people that don't know and, and that don't have the privilege of observing and seeing all of your hard work, can you give us a, a look at maybe like what a week looks like? If you're at Trinity Forest, give us an idea of uh, on and off week, number of hours or the activities or the things that you're trying to accomplish on an off week, just so I think other people can have appreciation. They might think that they work hard, but if they saw you work, they would be like, ah, okay, maybe I don't work <laughs> as hard as I thought that I did. Can you give me a little bit of a, or give anyone listening, watching that's aspiring to accomplish what you have, um, what should an off week look like? What, how, how hard are you really working? I think it's evolved a little bit um, throughout my golfing career. Uh, I feel like hard work um, in my younger years was a lot of repetitions, a lot of uh, balls hit on the range, a lot of uh, just like grinding, like just right. practice and like getting my move right. And then I feel like slowly it's become more about playing, more about being smart about what you're working on. And it's not necessarily like defined to be as like hard or like tough, uh, but just like being more smart about it. Definitely, I uh, feel like also maybe as I'm getting older, I feel like I I learn more about what I need and what I don't need. And I feel like sometimes uh, you don't necessarily need to hit 300 balls. I feel like I, when I'm hitting, I, I just really have a purpose. Like I don't just mindlessly just like go on the range for three hours. I think that's useless. Unless you're like really working on your swing to like change your movement. I feel like there's no point in just being out there just to be out there. So you just, I feel like I definitely try to always have a goal or like a purpose. And every time I uh, come to the golf course, I kind of have uh, not a schedule, but like I know what I'm going to do and how long about I'm going to do certain things or like how long I'm going to, you know, uh, try to work on each of my uh, uh, things that I need to work on and I feel like once I feel like I've achieved the goals that are like what I feel like I've achieved, achieved what I wanted to do then I feel like I, I can I can leave right. but it's definitely like a little bit evolving uh, I feel like uh, these days I'm trying to play a lot more so I feel like I'm trying to change my swing a little bit and like hit some balls but then once I feel like I have it I'm not gonna just spend another you know hours on the range I'm just gonna try to go on the on the course and test it out and like trying to play trying to even if it's just uh, playing with other people and like gambling I feel like that's a good way to like test it under pressure too so I feel like you always have to have more variety in, in your training um, as far as hours I, th I feel like it definitely depends a little bit too because I feel like it depends if you need more reps or if you need more play on on the week but I would say I try to uh, definitely have, um, I don't really hit that many balls. I feel like when I'm on the range, either I'm warming up or I'm working on something on my swing. But after that, most of my hitting is mostly wedges. Right. So I try to do a lot of distance control. I feel like that's probably, if I'm gonna spend like, normally I hit for an hour or like maximum hour and a half, I'll hit like long uh, swings for like maybe half an hour and then the rest will be just wedges. And then I do a lot of um, chipping and, and putting. Uh, and then I try to go uh, play maybe three, four, th three times a week at least. Yeah, and so I, I do feel like I've noticed that you do spend more, maybe in the last year or two years, like I have noticed that you are more on the golf course than necessarily hitting balls on the range. I do notice you on the wedge area and putting green more than most. What, you, you said that you come up with your schedule based on kind of what's needed. How are you determining what's needed? So I would say that there's three sources of feedback that are gonna determine that. One, just your experience, your own self-report on how you're feeling. Another feedback source would be on stats, and then another feedback source would be on what you've done with Cameron and what he kind of prescribes as, here's where attention needs to be. Are you using all three of those sources, one over the other, to determine what that schedule might look like? 
Oh yeah, for sure. I feel like the stats uh, Cameron is the one that looks <laughs> at it more because I feel like I have an idea of what's going on, and then he'll look at the stats. We'll come together and like kind of talk about what I think I need to work on, what he thinks I need to work on, and then based on that, I'll uh, I'll work on it first, and then I'll go test it out on the course. I feel like that's where I get my feedback from right. when I go on the course, and then I I just adjust depending on what I see. Yeah. So along the same lines as you working really hard in the lead up to an event. Um, and we know like the commitment and the dedication that you're doing before an event. I also think it's really interesting and I think it would be interesting to most people to know that here three days after a victory, you're back here in a session with Cam, you're back to work. Um, I, I think a lot of people, they think, okay, I won. I, I'm hitting it good. I don't need to do a whole lot. And yet you're back here working really hard at it. I'm curious to hear what your objectives would be right now, because clearly things are going quite well. Uh, say in the session, for example, that you had with Cameron, what would be the objectives that you laid out or that you wanted to accomplish even coming off the high of a victory? I mean, I think winning is definitely uh, really gratifying. Um, like you said, just because of all the hard work and everything, but I feel like also it's um, such a short period of time. I feel like you just win maybe the last round or like for me it was the last you know, few holes, the playoff. Uh, so it's, I feel like it's not really that accurate to paint a picture of your whole game just because you won or you didn't. Sure. You have to, I feel like, get um, I feel like a sense of your game outside of the result. And I feel like that's also something that I had to work on because I feel like when I, whenever I wasn't, the score wasn't good, I would be feeling too bad or like if the score was good, like I would feel too like too happy about it. I feel like you have to find something that's outside of the score itself, and uh, and and that's how you evaluate your game. I think. And even though I came out with the trophy that week, I feel like there's definitely some things that I needed to improve. And I think golf is always like that. There's always something. Even though sometimes you come out on top, there's still you know something that is could be better. And so I think that's what we were trying to work on. And. I think also the thing about golf is like each week is a reset and I feel like yeah one week I did well but then what's next you know and next week everyone starts again at level par before the first tee and so you have to start again and so you have to learn to like move on whether it's really from a bad week or from a good week I feel like you have to move on pretty quickly. Yeah, I was about to say, as you said that, it works for the inverse. It works for really bad weeks too. Yeah. Just because you won or just because you made you missed a cut, it doesn't give you a picture of what the entire performance exactly. was. And yeah. sometimes we get so tied into those results mm -hmm. and, and kind of defining ourselves or our games by what the most recent results were. So I think that's a good lesson to work both ways. You mentioned the playoff there, and I wanted just to zoom in on one, you getting into the playoffs, you gotta get it up and down. You have to make like a five or six putter to force a playoff. And then you go back to 18, you're in the same situation. You gotta get it up and down. You have to make a four footer to, to win a tournament, which is a scenario that we all kind of dream of being in. Um, but then you're in the moment. I'm, uh, I'm wondering if there are tools and tactics that you leaned on, or if you can talk us through, uh, put us in your head and talk us through what the self-talk, how you manage the self-talk or the emotions in that situation for other people that are listening, that are trying to learn that skill of, well, how do I win? How do I cope with the pressure that's kind of baked into these, uh, these situations at the end of the golf tournament that are gonna determine a winner or a loser? Yeah, it's definitely tough. I feel like I've um, definitely, you know, based my experience on uh, previous weeks in the past, especially last year, um, I have come really close a bunch of times and wasn't able to handle it the right way. And I feel like this time I feel like I was kind of over it. I was like, you know, I'm done finishing second. I'm done, you know, finishing in the top 10. This is my chance. And so I, have, I just wanted to have no regrets. And I, I just really wanted to handle my myself and my emotions the best because that's all I could do really because I didn't know like on paper Georgia was uh, you know hitting longer it's a short par, four, uh, par five so she would have a shorter club to go on the green and stop it so obviously I, I knew I was not the favorite just not based on paper so I was just trying to get you know the best shot I could get to to make a birdie and um, I think you just have to just hit it one shot at a time and just really go in but like without even thinking of the consequence of whether you win or you lose because at that point I was really fine whether I was you know gonna lose or not but I just wanted to be able to handle my myself yeah better. so I want to talk through a little bit because there's a lot of like brilliance in that answer is one is the acceptance part that I just heard was that 
one is like refuse, like I'm not gonna finish second, I'm tired of finish second, I'm, I'm not, I don't want just a top 10, I'm going for this. But then in the same breath is some acceptance that if that doesn't happen, you said I don't care if I win or lose, uh, I'm, I'm getting after this and I'm gonna give this my all to win. Um, but in that moment, are, are you verbalizing these things to a caddy? Are these aff like almost affirmations that are going on in your head? You're walking to a, into a shot, or are you so zoned in and focused? Uh, and instead of worrying about the emotions or the thoughts in your head, are you then just transferring your focus to this is the job at hand? I'm focused entirely on this shot, or is it a little bit of both of those? Uh, it's definitely self-talk. Uh, like I said, I've been through this a few times. And I knew that this time I wasn't as um, fearful or anxious. And so I knew that something had changed or like I felt different about it. And so I knew that that was a positive because uh, in the past, I feel like I was just always almost on the defensive, like just trying to handle the situation the best I could, but like almost being fearful. And I felt like this one, I felt actually pretty calm. And so that's when, you know, I realized, you know, like this is my chance and I'm not going to let this, you know, slide through. So I just talk to myself just because I knew how I handled it in the past and I knew how, what I had to, to do or like tell myself to be able to go through it. Yeah, well, uh, incredible experience that you have and then to share that with um, our players is incredible and I thank you for your generosity. Spend a little bit of time. You're the eighth ranked player in the world. That makes you the highest ranked French women player ever. You're the winningest French player. You've got a lot of people that are looking up to you over there and over here and they'll learn a lot from uh, you sharing these really awesome insights with us. So thank you, Celine. No problem, I appreciate it.